Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight we bring you the immortal melodies of Franz Schubert in the operetta based on the life and music of that great composer. It's Blossom Time with book and lyrics by Dorothy Donnelly and music adapted by Sigmund Romberg. In the role of Mitzi in tonight's performance, you will hear the charming coloratura soprano of the Metropolitan Opera Company, Patrice Munzel, and as Baron Schober, the popular tenor of radio and the screen, Kenny Baker. As we turn back the pages of time, I become the composer, Franz Schubert, seated at a table in a small outdoor cafe with my closest friend, Baron Franz Schubert. It's blossom time in Vienna, and everyone is singing. Hey, let us greet the spring with singing wine, golden in the glasses ringing. Why should we never care? Joy is everywhere, so fill your glass with all you like and let us stay. Did you ever see such a day, Schober? If I look at that sky... Sky, sky, at the moment, I'm more interested in my stomach. Where is that waiter? I'm afraid he's very busy. The whole town seems to have turned out and landed right here at Domeyer. Come on, let's order everything on the menu, huh? Wait a minute, Franz. Remember, I'm just a poor composer. Oh. Just because you're wealthy, I, I can't always take advantage of our friendship to... Uh... Look, a great composer like you shouldn't have to worry about material things. Your thoughts should be on you, spring and, and music. Oh, what inspiration I get on such a day as this. Birds are darting, buds are starting, hand in hand, go girl and boy. Very charming, but more calming is the wine cup golden joy. I would roam from my home far across the sea. My joy best is expressed in a melody. What more royal, comrade loyal, greater blessings can you tell? Since you're pondering wine and wandering friendship, I will lose its spell. Oh, gentle April, who blesses the earth with caresses, be kindly and give me the girl of my heart. Upon her soft maiden bosom, let sweet lilacs blossom. While I sing her praises, my springtime song. Oh, how the world laughs in springtime. Is ever known as love's own ring time. Why are we waiting? The birds are mating. In every tree they chirp and sing. And in the green forest flowers, we find a wreath of snowy flowers. Why do we tarry? It's time to marry. And pluck the blossoms in the spring. And in the green forest flowers, Find a of snowy flowers. Why do we tarry? It's time to marry. Come pluck the blossoms of the spring. Oh, oh isn't that wonderful? Isn't it great? Look at those blossoms. And look at those three beautiful young girls sitting at that table over there. Ah, uh -huh. careful, Brian. Pulling the reins. <laughs> a man could get into trouble on a day like this. Well, 
then? Yeah, I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, there you are. Madame Bella Bruna. You deceiver, you breaker of women's hearts. Now, please, just a moment. You I... promised to take me to supper last night after my performance at the opera. Where were you? Careful, madame. My friend is a composer. You'll upset his inspiration. I'm not interested in his inspirations. I'm only interested Bella in... Bella Bruna! My husband. My husband. I know. Good heavens. Oh, I must fly. Get out of sight, Baron. He's frightfully jealous yes. of you. Yes, yes. Uh, Franz, where shall I go? Here, under the table. Oh. Where is she? Where, 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 where did she go? Young man, wasn't Madame Bella Bruna here a moment ago? Well, she may have been, sir. I couldn't say. I saw her talking with that young whippersnapper, Baron Schober. Now, where did they go? Uh, that way, I think. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll find them, and when I do, I'll see. <laughs> All right, the coast is clear, Schober. You can come out now. Oh. You certainly get yourself involved, my friend. Yes, but through no fault of my own, Franz. Bella Bruna fancies herself in love with me. Oh, and you? Franz, you know women mean absolutely nothing to me. Nothing. I, uh, I beg your pardon, but aren't you Baron Schaubert? Well, I... 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 <laughs> <laughs> nothing, eh? Oh, Baron Schaubert, you don't remember me. And after giving me your key and everything... My Baron Schober. Why, Baron Schober? Uh, uh, what key? The key to your ice skates. My ice skates? Why, I haven't been skating since I was ten years old. Ten? Well, you told me you were twelve. Oh. Oh! Oh, why, why, why you're Mitzi. Little Mitzi. <laughs> Mitzi Kranz. <laughs> Miss Kranz, may I present Mr. Schubert? Oh, you're not Ron Schubert. Yes, I'm afraid I am. Oh, I'm honored to meet you. Oh, thank you. And I'm delighted to meet you. My sisters and I were sitting over there at that table, and we saw you turn and look at us, and well, suddenly I recognized Baron Schaubert. And I remembered that years ago, he told me if I was ever in trouble to call on him. And uh, are you in trouble, Missy? Oh, desperate trouble. Well, what's wrong? My sisters want to get married, but my father doesn't think we should have bows. Oh, you, you should have a bow, Miss Missy. Oh, my sisters, Kitsy and Fritzy, have. They went out walking with them just now, and... If Papa finds out about it, he'll be furious. Oh. They'll never be able to get married. <laughs> Say, would you like me to try and persuade him, Missy? You think you could? Could I? Leave it to me. Your sisters are as good as married right now. Don't worry any more about it. All your cares are blown away. Soon will be their wedding day. Two little maidens soon will be wed. Three little maids no more. to alarm you, but isn't that your father just turning the corner there? Oh, dear. Oh, what can I do? If he sees me here talking to a man, he'll be furious. Well, wait a minute. I'll tell you what. I'll go tell him you're arranging for Franz for some music lessons. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Isn't it, Mr. Schubert? Why, I can't think of a better one. Good. I'll take care of it right away. It's a beautiful day, isn't it, Miss Mitzi? Yes, yeah, beautiful. You know, moments like this have been the theme of music since time began. A lovely girl... Spring day and a lonely man. Once on a time in a kingdom by the sea, 
with a young prince and a lonely. I shall remember forever. Aha, Mitzi, and all alone with the man. Oh, Papa. Why, Miss Mitzi, this man is your father. Mm -hmm, depressing, ain't it? <laughs> Papa, may I introduce Mr. Franz Schubert? Franz Schubert, the great composer? Yes, Papa. Mm. I came to see Mr. Schubert about uh, music lessons, but I didn't come alone. Fritzi and Kitty are here. You don't say, eh? Well, they must have shrunk a little. I don't see them. <laughs> I believe they uh, went for a stroll through the gardens. Well, that's harmless enough if they don't meet those two young men who are always mooning around them. Oh, but Fritzy and Kitty are in love, Papa. They want to get married. Impossible. I refuse to grant my permissions. But surely you aren't against marriage, sir. Why, you got married yourself. One of my strongest arguments. <laughs> you know what marriage can lead to? Daughters. You know what daughters can lead to? Young whippersnippers who try to take them away from you. Such agony those boys cost me. I, I, I could do anything this side of murder to get rid of them. Then let them marry your daughters. That ought to teach them a lesson. You're right. I, I, I'll do it. Uh, wait a minute. Would you say that was this side or the other side of murder? <laughs> well, I, I think the punishment would just about fit the crime, Mr. Kranz. Oh, there you are, Mr. Kranz. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry I missed him, Franz. I had to hide from Bella Bruna, and he slipped by me. Well, it's just as well, my friend. Mr. Krantz has consented to the marriage of his daughters. Everything has been arranged. Who arranged that? Oh, why, you did, Mr. Krantz. <laughs> Sometimes I'm so clever, I outwit myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Haru, everyone is leaving the cafe here. We must go, too, or else Mama will be wondering what happened to us. Uh, wouldn't you like to have us walk home with you, Mr. Krantz? Well, oh, that's a wonderful idea, Baron Schaubert. You walk ahead with Papa, and uh, Mr. Schubert and I will follow. Yes, I, I'm so lucky. <laughs> Don't get lost in the crowd, Papa. Uh, if I do, I'll find myself. <laughs> Come, Mr. Schubert. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schubert, I want to thank you for helping me with Papa. Oh, it was a pleasure. But I'm sorry the music lessons were just an excuse. Oh, but I'd love to study with you, if you're willing. Would tomorrow afternoon be too soon? Oh, that's wonderful. We can talk all afternoon. The whole afternoon? About music. Oh, yes. About music. Oh, your music is singing, bringing secrets sweet in its song to me. Your vision shines on me from above.
Did you ever notice the way folks talk sometimes about the railroads, just as if they were all one big railroad? Actually, there are about 600 different railroads operating in the United States. Some of them operate over thousands of miles of track spanning great sections of the country. Some run just a few miles between local stations. Others operate joint terminals for two or more railroads in cities. Whatever the kind of operating they do, each one of them has its own business to do, its own problems to meet, its own services to perform. But there are some things common to all of them, large and small. They all are part of the great national and indeed continental system of transportation, which makes it possible for any shipper anywhere to send his goods anywhere else that railroads run, all as one transaction. He doesn't have to deal with a lot of railroads, just the one in his own town. And there's another thing common to all these railroads. They are, every one of them, part and an essential part of every place they serve. They are not some distant and abstract something, the railroad. They are part of your town. Railroad men and women work there. Railroad wages are paid there. Railroad supplies and materials are bought there. Railroad property is owned there. And railroad taxes are paid there. Because railroad service is so widespread, because railroads go so many places, all of us are likely to overlook this big and simple fact about them. The fact that everywhere the railroad goes, it is a local business enterprise, a citizen of every community it serves. And now back to Blossom Time, starring Patrice Monsell, Kenny Baker, and your host, Gordon McRae. <laughs> My dear friends, dare I say, ladies and gentlemen, today we have been present at the marriage of three of my two daughters. I mean, uh, two of my three daughters to three of the two gentlemen. <laughs> but that, uh, Papa, you're getting all mixed up. Now, Mitzi, if you're going to interrupt me, I'll lose the thread of the whole thing here. I'll have to start all over again with the thread in one eye and a tear in the other. Now, as I Mr. would... Mr. Kranz. Baron Schober, please, don't interrupt, please. But, Mr. Kranz, we're waiting to sing the serenade Mr. Schubert composed especially for the occasion. Oh, really? Well, uh, where is Mr. Schubert? I'm right here at the piano, Mr. Kranz. Oh, but what, what a coinky-dinky. <laughs>
very pretty. Very pretty indeed, Mr. Schubert. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kranz. A little depressing, but pretty. Why, don't be silly, Mr. Kranz. People will be singing that song when we're all playing on harps. That's what I mean. <laughs> depressing, ain't it? <laughs> don't pay any attention to Papa, Mr. Schubert. It was beautiful. If my little song pleased you, Miss Mitzi, then I'm happy. Well, come, everybody. Coffee and cake in the garden. <laughs> May I pour, Papa? You mean you want to rain at the table? <laughs> that, that was a little joke, Mitzi. Oh, Papa. Aren't you coming with us into the garden, Franz? Oh, no, thanks. I, I'm a little self-conscious among so many people. <laughs> among people or just around Mitzi? Is it that obvious? It is to me. You know, I wrote my serenade just for her. I've tried to say everything in music that I've never been able to put into words. Did you tell her that? No. When I'm with her, my throat goes so dry, it's all I can do to pass the time of day. <laughs> Look, I've written another song for her, Franz, a love song. W would you sing it to Mitzi for me? Me? You have a way about you with women. I know it's asking a great deal, but I, I hope you might be willing to help me out. Why, of course I will, Franz. At least I'll, I'll do my best. Oh, thank you, my friend. Well, Baron Schober, Baron Schober, there's a very beautiful lady in the garden asking for you. What's her name, Mr. Kranz? Madame Bella Bruna. Bella Bruna? <laughs> yeah. You can't escape your past, Franz. Well, who wants to escape a past like Bella Bruna? <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't let her charms fool you, Mr. Kranz. She has a violent temper. You see that scar on my hairline? Yes. Soup tureen. No. Uh, yes. Besides, she has a very jealous husband, if my memory serves me right. Her husband isn't with her, is he? No. Oh, good. Well, I'd better go out and get rid of her before he shows up, and then I'll be covered with scars. But, Franz, what about my song? I'll sing it to her later, Franz. Franz, Franz, don't you chaps get your love letters mixed up? Franz Schubert, Franz Schober. <sighs> love That's... letters? Why, Franz Schober is a baron, a gentleman. While I... Well, I... you're nothing but a genius, you sly old foxy, you. <laughs> oh, um, Papa, the guests are beginning to leave, and... Oh, Mr. Schubert, I thought you'd gone. I know, I... Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go back to being host again. Uh, depressing, ain't it? <laughs> Everyone enjoyed your serenade so much, Mr. Schubert. They were all talking about it outside. Would you permit me to dedicate it to you, Miss Mitzi? Oh, Franz, how wonderful. I mean, Mr. Schubert. Oh, no, please. If you know what it means to have you call me, Franz. Miss Mitzi, dare I hope that... Well, I got rid of Bella Brute, I, oh. I think. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, don't apologize, Baron Schubert. We're delighted to see you. Yes, of course, we're delighted. May I come in? Yeah, oh, Bella Bruna. <laughs> I'm not intruding, am I? Oh, of course not. Uh, 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 Franz, uh, didn't you want to say goodbye to Fritzie and Kitsy? They're leaving on their honeymoon, you know. You better hurry. They were on their way when I came in. Yes, oh, we'll catch them. Come on, Franz. Oh, we'll be right back, Miss Mitzi. I, I mean, we have something important to tell you. It's coming, Franz? Coming. Charming man, Baron Schubert, don't you think, Miss Franz? Baron. So is Mr. Schubert. All Papa's friends are most pleasant. I'll wager I know one who's head over heels in love with you. You do? Who? Oh, come now. I'm sure you can guess the name. It's someone who just left the room. Oh, madam, you embarrass me. I'll give you the initials then. S.S. How could you tell? He's so shy. Oh, he's shy with you, is he? That's a new method. What do you mean? Why, that bashful, shy creature with the silent man and the eloquent eyes has left a trail of broken hearts all over Vienna. I don't believe it. He's fine and good Oh, and... don't be taken in, my dear. These shy fellows are the worst of all. I don't believe you. You have no proof. No proof? Why, I am the proof. He was shy with me. He looked at me with those longing eyes. He sang to me. Oh, madam. You must weep and let your tears be tears of joy. But far better to cry at your age than to cry at mine. Good afternoon, Miss Franz. Oh, Franz. Has she gone yet? Uh, Mitzi. Mitzi. What happened? What's wrong? Oh, leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Oh, now, wait. Don't cry, Mitzi. Please. <laughs> Come lift your head with laughter and show your pretty smile again. For sunshine follows after on summer roses in the rain. You may not everyone see. When women are believers, they may find their hearts are sore. They talk of love and fevers when another maiden they adore. 
But be sure plaintive sighing and other tales you shortly tell. When Cupid comes a flying, you'll hear the wedding bell. I'm sure that I never wed. Quite often I've heard that said. Forever with love I am done. But they'll come just the one. Love ever fills the heart. Only one voice makes the pulses start. Only one can delight us, turn our sadness into brightness. There's no happiness apart from that one only. Sunlight shines brighter when he is there. Darkest clouds fade into Here's a copy of my song. Wouldn't now be a good time to... Oh, uh, Mr. Schubert. Uh, Baron Schober, I, I know you'll excuse me. I must see to our guest. No, 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 wait, Mitzi. Uh, just a moment, huh? You see, Franz has composed a new song that he wishes to lay at your feet. Doesn't that interest you? Oh, I'm sorry, I... Uh... Oh, please, come. Sit down and let me sing it to you. Oh, well, if you wish to sing it, Baron Schober, it will give me great pleasure to listen. Good. Then sit here, huh? A place of honor in a private box. Franz, is the orchestra ready? I'm here. The zephyr murmurs to his love the trees. The lilacs yield their honey to the bees. The nightingale sobs out his accents long. While I can only breathe to you in song. While I can only breathe to you my yearning song. Ah! my love, the oh, heart my love, and so will ever be my only love, my only love. Oh, now is the time to speak for me, my friend. I wait for her answer in, in the garden. Very well, friend. Mitzi. Franz Schubert wrote that song to tell you of his love. He worships you, Mitzi. He wants you for his wife. But I can't marry him, Franz. I don't love him. I... He... But you must love him, Mitzi. You're the whole world to him. Oh, Franz, I can't help how I feel. I can't change how I feel. I just realize it's you. You I love. Mitzi. Oh, darling. What a fool I've been. I... Mitzi, I've always loved you. Oh, Franz, darling, darling. No. No. What have I... What have I done? I... It was for my dearest friend, Franz Schubert, I promised to speak. What can I say to Franz? Say nothing. What? <laughs> I saw it all, and I understand. Franz, it, it was unintentional, believe me. Can, can you forgive me? Why, of course. It will bring me great joy to know that you both are happy. Go tell your father the glad news, Miss Mitzi. Come, darling. Goodbye, Mr. Schubert. We'll never forget you. She loves him, of course. 
how could I have thought for a moment that she could care for me? Well, at least I have my music, my eternal mistress. She will never desert me. We were talking a few minutes ago about the railroad as a citizen of every community it serves. Like any other citizen, it does its share in meeting the costs of government and public institutions and services. It does so through the taxes it pays on its property or its earnings. Now, everybody pays taxes. But there is a difference between the taxes which railroads pay and most of the taxes which many other forms of commercial transportation pay. The difference is in what's done with them. Railroad taxes are not used to build and maintain railroad tracks or terminals. Railroad taxes are like the taxes you pay on your home or your property. They are used to help pay for the defense of the nation, for the maintenance of public institutions and public welfare services, for public health and public schools. And they even help to pay for the highways and the waterways and airports and airways, provided and maintained at the expense of the taxpayers for the use of other forms of commercial transportations which compete with railroads. So when you think of the railroad in your community, think of it not just as the railroad, but as a fellow citizen and a fellow taxpayer. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. And now back to the third act of Blossom Time, starring Patrice Monsell, Kenny Baker, and your host, Gordon McRae. Oh, Missy, Missy. You've left me nothing but echoes of melodies. I'll never write again, never again. A caller at this hour? I'll see the gentleman, Mrs. Coburg. Won't you come in, sir? Thank you. I'm sorry to bother you so late in the evening, Mr. Schubert. But I am Count Shantoff, the husband of Madame Bella Oh, yes. The opera singer. I just heard your unfinished symphony perform, Mr. Schubert. It was magnificent. Thank you. I'm so impressed. I'd like to arrange that you write an opera for Madame Bella Bruna. I should be honored. As soon as my health improves... I came tonight because I may not be able to talk with you at a later date about this. However, I've arranged a payment for you in my will. Your will? Whether we meet again, Mr. Schubert, depends entirely upon the accuracy of my aims. Oh, a duo. 
So to say, rather an affair of honor. An affair of honor. Can any fancied slight justify the taking of life? This is no fancied slight. This man's in love with my wife. And I know Baron Schober's reputation. Schober? Are you referring to Fran Schober? Yes. We meet at dawn. Oh, Count Shantoff, this is all a mistake. Schober is engaged to marry the daughter of the court jeweler, Mitzi Kranz. I beg of you, don't jeopardize their happiness. They are so much in love. Why do you make such a plea for them? He is my best friend. And she... She is the woman you loved and lost? Yes. But you don't want me to kill the man? Oh, no. There is enough unhappiness in the world. Let those who have been fortunate enough to find happiness keep and enjoy it. You plead well, sir. All right. Have Baron Schober send his seconds to me. We'll arrange a reconciliation. Thank you. I'll send word to him at once. Mr. Schubert, we will meet again. It's a rare pleasure to meet a gentleman such as you. Good night, sir. Good night. Mrs. Colbert? Mrs. Colbert? Yes, Mr. Schubert? Go to the residence of Baron Schober and ask him to come here immediately. It is of the utmost importance. Yes, sir. Oh, what music. What eternal music is sounding in my ears. Where is my pen? I must, I must write it down. Mitzi. Oh, it is her dear voice in my heart giving me inspiration. Madame Bella Brunner. The day of my sister's wedding, she warned me against a faceless lover. I thought it was you. I see. Oh, Frank, I can't bear to think of you like this, ill and alone. Will you let me try to make amends? I'll devote my life to making you happy. Do you mean you... you are in love with me, Mitzi? Oh, I've always been very fond of you, Frank. I'll nurse you, serve you, treasure your music. Mitzi, look at me. Look at me and say, Franz, I love you. I'm It's no good, my darling. You see, with all your generosity, you cannot give me that. So there is nothing you can give me. Now, uh, what has happened between you and Schober? I'm never going to see him again. After some of the things Madame Bre Bella Bruna said, why... He loves you and you love him. It doesn't matter what anyone says. I don't love him. Oh, I see. Then you would desert him in his hour of danger. Danger? Count Shantoff has challenged him to a duel. A duel? Take place at dawn. Oh, no. He can't. He might be killed. There, you see? You do love him. Come in. Run! Oh, Mitzi. Mitzi, my dear. Oh, darling. Darling. Franz, Count Shantoff was here. 
He wants to speak to your seconds to arrange a reconciliation. A reconciliation? Oh, Franz, I don't know how to thank you. Don't try, my friend. Just be happy together. Always. We will, Franz. We will. And so I, I give my song of love to you. Take it. For it belongs to people like you who meet and fall in love in blossom.